So in case you don't need, know me, uh, my name is Eric Weaver. I run Project Cloud at the ETC. Um, so the mission of the project is uh, to unite technology leaders, studio ex executives, and assess and define methods that accelerate the use of uh, cloud-based resources for the evolution and future of film and media creation and production. So it's just to bring Hollywood and, um, and Silicon Valley together. It's to merge these two things. And I report directly to the CTOs of the six major studios in this mission. And so every quarter I get to go up there and talk to them about where we're at, what we're doing, what are we working on. Um, from that, I, I run actually five different teams. Uh, those five different teams include uh, a group focused on transport layers and ephemeral storage. So how do you get to and from the cloud? Um, the second one is security. Uh, in our security work, it's mostly the heads of security at the major studios. We helped to draft the first round of an MPAA document that should hopefully be coming out in March. Uh, that will be giving the new standards for cloud security. Uh, we have one focused on metadata, storage and long-term storage and archive, and finally on common frameworks. How do all these pieces plug into one another in the future? Uh, kind of like Legos or whatnot, your storage, your compute, your different software pieces. Everything we see is basically a snowflake workflow. Um, so what are we really facing here in the future right now? We're facing the transition. We've gone from film to tape to file and now to network or cloud-based computing. And that's kind of where we're at at this transitory stage. And what's so important about this is when we switched over to tape-based workflows, we tried to follow the methodologies of film. And in the new world, you can kind of open your mind and see what computers are capable of. Computers are beyond people, <laughs> and we can do so much more with them. So it, it's really too bad that the term cloud itself has really become kind of impotent or just a catch-all for marketing folk because cloud in the future touches so many different aspects of, of what we need to do in, in the whole life cycle of media and entertainment creation. From creation and process, to organization and governance, to storage and archive, to connecting and sharing, to ingress and ingress, to control and security. Um, so that's kind of why I put together this, this uh, series of talks. I had over 100 different papers submitted to the cloud track at NAB, which I'm uh, basically the kind of chairman of that committee that sets those up. And I just had so many talks that I couldn't actually put them all on the stage. And so in the, over the next three days, we're going to be covering topics from post in the cloud, security and transport workflows, MAMs and DAMs, hybrids, ecosystems, ROI, open source and storage, and analytics and big data. Uh, just in case you want to know, because uh, I know this is being recorded, if you're looking for an official definition of cloud, what you really want to go to is NIST. NIST will have that listing. Um, that is something that could be argued for days over, and so I'm just going to point you in that direction. One of my dear friends likes to just simply call it someone else's computer. <laughs> um, what I think an advanced definition is, or at least some of the people that I've talked with, is having a defined documentations of your APIs or your JSON calls. You just need to be able to interact with other things. You need to be able to speak that machine language. So more than any other industry, I've really found this particular graph to be true. And this is uh, actually comes from the former, um, former CTO of Netflix. And a lot of this community is ignore, ignore, I said no, I said no. And then they realize how far behind the curve they are. And it's really important to understand that and how critical this is going to be for, the, for this industry. So why in the world should we care? I'll just give three quick reasons. Um, the first thing is time and money. You're expected to do more and more and more in this world. Um, your file formats, uh, they're shooting in up 4K and beyond. The TVs are now producing in 4K and beyond. And we're stuck in the middle trying to get everything done with what we have now. And that presents tremendous challenges. So being able to leverage some of these things, these economies of scale, these, these, these great resources, 
is almost very similar to what we did with the post houses or other groups in the past. They decide what they really want to do and what they don't. Point two is really consider the future. So when Nikola Tesla put up uh, basically Niagara Falls, he created cost-effective electricity in vast quantities that allowed industries to be created that never existed before. Case in point would be Alcoa. Alcoa couldn't basically, they'd have to cut entire forests down to produce aluminum um, for the general public. But now with this uh, cost-effective electricity, they were able to produce it in a cost-effective manner. That was an industry that didn't exist before these mass quantities of scale of uh, compute could be around. And the final one is, is the concept of what business are we in? Um, we are in a business of creative. We are not in data storage. This isn't our specialty uh, our, or building these great facilities for that. I mean, look at the movie, for example, The Hobbit. The Hobbit has upwards to 10 petabytes of data. Is that what we're in the business of? Creating facilities and maintaining all that storage over time? Um, some of the reports that Coughlin's saying is that we'll be up into the exabyte level by 2019. Do I know if that's true or not? I don't know. But we're just pushing into 4 and 6K. So those are just some of my really quick thoughts that I wanted to share in the group. And I'd like to introduce, uh, well, so really some basic stuff. Um, there's not a big audience here today, but in general, we want to try and not go about uh, back and forth through the doors while people are presenting. The real purpose here is to, to uh, record and capture everyone's videos so that we could share it to a broader audience. Um, so uh, if you need anything at all, please feel free to reach out to me or any of the team. We should have lunch and um, a cocktail hour later this evening and everything, a bunch more people. So, and I just really wanted to thank YouTube for donating the space today and a couple people who are providing the food. Basically, the sponsors are providing the cocktail hour and the food and snacks like that so that you have things while we're on property. Thank you so much, and I'd like to introduce to Miles.